بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم second method for calculation of cost of equity dividend yield plus growth method what is the difference between this method and the previous method in the previous method we assume that there is no growth in the dividend but in this method we assume there is a growth but growth is constant so no need for reading the definition i'm just telling you in one point in this method we assume there is a growth in the dividend but in the previous formula there was no growth Previous formula, there is no growth, but in this formula, we also assume that there is a growth in the dividend. And we will not receive, it means we will not receive only the current rate of return, but also there will be a growth in the dividend. But remember one thing, that the growth is constant, right? For example, 5% forever, 10% forever, whatever is the rate, whatever is the growth, so that growth will remain for the whole life of the equity share. So that is why the formula is changed a little bit. D divided by MP multiple D, or also sometimes we can call it as D1. D divided by MP or MP multiplied 100 plus G. Only G is included here. Why G? Because G means the growth rate, right? And sometimes if you don't have D, D or D1, D or D1 both are the same, but sometimes some books mention D or some books mention D1 as well. D1 means the, the uh, basically the expected dividend. What dividend? D means the expected, expected dividend. The dividend. D means the expected dividend. Or D means simply next year dividend. What dividend? Next dividend. D means what? Next dividend. If sometime, if sometime next dividend or expected dividends are not given in the question, but instead of that, instead of that, the last year dividend is given, or we sometimes it will mention we can say initial dividends. So remember that initial dividends, or we can say last year dividend, is considered as what? Is considered as 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 this one as D naught, or we can say what initial. Some books it is mentioned initial, some books it is mentioned D, it is mentioned last year. In some books it is mentioned last year dividend, in some books it is mentioned initial dividend. So, if initial dividend or last year dividend is given but expected dividend or next year dividend is not given, that although we need the, the D1 or expected dividend in this one, if this is so, first of all, how to find out the next year dividend or expected dividend or D1? D1 is equal to d naught into 1 plus g so from this formula you can find that what d1 right if it is d2 for example right if it is d2 let us say for example sometime we need d2 so d2 will be equal to d1 then multiply to 1 plus 1 plus g right so this is the formula if it is d3 so d3 equal to d2 into 1 plus g in this way you can apply the formula but usually we need this one. If D1 is not given, so D1 is equal to D0 into 1 plus G. So this is the formula. Now let us see for a simple example how to calculate. Go for the example. A company plan to issue 1,000 new shares of rupees 100 each at a par. Okay, company want to issue how many shares? 1,000 shares. We don't need the number of shares here itself. We need only the amount, how much we sell it. We sell it at, par, at the price is 100, but we sell it at par. It is fine. The flotation costs are expected to be 5% of the share. Okay, that is 5%. Then, the company pay a dividend of 10 per share. And the growth in the dividend is expected to be 5%. Dividend is 10, but growth is equal to how much? 5%. Fine. Compute the cost of new equity shares. Up to this point, this is point number one. Point number two, if the current market price of an equity is equal to 150, calculate the cost of existing equity share capital. So once again, like the previous one here, we have found we have the MP as well as we have the NP. So we have to find the cost for MP as well as for, for NP, right? But initially we have to, uh, we have to find out the elements. How to find out the elements first we have to find out np 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 is equal to how much we sold it out we sold the shares for how much for 100 at par if it is at 100 at par mention just 100 
do we have any flotation cost yes we have a flotation cost as well here see flotation cost is equal to how many percentage five percentage right so 100 minus 100 into it into five percentage so press equal to you get 95 so np is equal to 95 how much is np market price market price is equal to equal to how much <clears throat> see uh, yeah it is from here if the current market price of an equity share is equal to 150 so current market price is equal to how much 150 what else we need in the formula in the formula we need g or growth rate you can find that the growth rate as how many percentage growth rate expected no this is there the company pay a dividend of this much initially okay per share and the growth rate is equal to five percentage growth is equal to how many percentage growth is also five percentage see we need we need to find out the elements of the question and of course after this we need to find out d right in this case d is given company pay a dividend of rupees and another per share it does not mention current it does not mention initially it does not mention last so let us assume it as d1 d or d1 let us say for example it is d1 right? it is equal to how much it is equal to 10. so now we have each part we have np we have mp we have g we have d so what we can apply the formula right so how you can see the formula let me copy paste the formula here so this is the formula we have copied now find out the value of cost of equity okay cost of new shares cost of new shares are equal to d divided by how much is d d divided by d divided by d divided by np np is equal to how much np is equal to 95 equal to 95 then then multiply to 100 then of course plus how much plus equal to five percentage plus equal to five just take a five although later on we'll add it as five percentage right press the equal sign you get equal to this much and of course then put the percentage percentage sign in this case if the, it is the cost of new equity shares so 10 divided by 95 multiplied 100 plus 5 percentage right if it is 5 percentage definitely if you add it finally you get equal to how many percentage one okay 15.5 percentage then go for the knee for the next one cost of equity of existing shares existing shares existing shares it is equal to <clears throat> again how much is dividend dividend is equal to 10 divided by how much is the cost of equity cost of equity for price market price of equity is 150 from where we got 150 from here so then multiply to equal to how much multiply to 100 then plus equal to plus 5 press the equal sign you get some value here and of course give a percentage sign for this one and percentage sign for this one as well so cost for the new shares according to this formula if there is a growth as well so for 15 uh, for the new and hello 1.6 for the existing shares